All right, ladies and gentlemen, please back away from your poker tables, grab your drinks, and welcome the Fairfield High School Drumline.
Ladies and gentlemen, the Fairfield High School Drumline. Let's hear it. Woo! Turns out that these guys have been practicing for weeks on some special thing they call the rain dance. I think it worked. traditional person and like the old style of banquet, I apologize now because it might get wild tonight. When you came in, you should have been given beads, fake money, and a ticket. If there is anyone in here who did not receive a ticket, please stand up so we can get you one. Okay, looks like we're good. That's for prizes later, so you want to have them. Everyone in this room should have a ticket, including the chamber staff and the banquet committee members. If you are receiving an award or presenting an award tonight, please look at the program to know when you need to come up. Please come up on this side and you'll walk onto the stage, accept the award, then go over to have your photo taken and you'll want to go right over there. At the end of the meeting, we would like all award recipients to go over to this wall and have a group photo taken. So, let's get the night started. Tonight, I would like to introduce a man who has appeared at the Comedy Store in Los Angeles, starred on Saturday Night Live, and featured on Comedy Central and David Letterman. Yes, I would like to do that. Unfortunately, instead, I welcome to the stage someone who might just be the funniest man in Libertyville, Iowa. You've heard his voice, now listen to his stories, put your hands together and keep them up where we can see them. Here's Jeffrey Headquist! Are you guys having a good time? Good, thank you, very nice, thanks for coming, see you later. Oh, wait, wait, no. You're obviously in a good mood because, well, you've been drinking, which is good, and it makes me feel right at home because you're just like my family. Half was Irish, half was Swedish, you can only imagine. So both sides of my family were fueled by ethanol, which is a great thing. We had a motto in our family, Boilermakers, they're not just for breakfast anymore. Of course, everyone knows the Irish and they think of that leprechaun kind of thing. You know, they're fond of their adult beverages and you're thinking, ah, oh, it's Irish, it's kind of like the Keebler Elves got a case of Guinness to go with the cookies. <laughs> Father O'Malley, would you be liking a taste of the wee bit of spirit? <laughs> Don't touch. Don't touch. Me lucky charms. But no, the Irish side of my family with a few drinks was not leprechaun-like at all. It was more like, Josie, you know, I really like you. I think you're, and it's not just because I had a few drinks, okay? Really, I think you're really, you're smart, and you're, you remind me of my Aunt Margaret, God bless her soul. That's what it was like at our family get-togethers. And then, well, there were the Swedes. Their favorite drink was Aquavit. Do we have anybody Scandinavian here? No. Aquavit is a traditional Scandinavian beverage. It looks and tastes just like antifreeze. I know some of you are saying, how does he know what antifreeze tastes like? It's my heritage, okay? Now I'm good for about 40 below. Prestone, 1999, very good uh, year. If they couldn't get Aquavit, though, there was not a problem. They would drink whiskey or wine or vodka or sterno, hair tonic. They didn't care. And being descendants of Vikings, as opposed to the Irish, they had all this repressed anger and aggression which came to the surface after a few drinks. You know, I never much liked your dad. You know, he was a pain in the butt, and you're not much better. And if he was here, I'd tell him right now, to your face, okay? That's right. It's what you like in the old country. 
You can imagine what a joyous Thanksgiving it was at our house. Yalmer, I just want you to know that I'm praying for you. Well, you can keep your damn prayers. If I had my baby eat your livestock and set fire to your village, this is good hair tonic. The only thing they could really agree on was Irish coffee, which of course is the original you drink. Kind of mellows you out and simultaneously speeds everything up so you don't know where you're going, but you're getting there really quickly. So with that kind of background, I was either going to become an alcoholic or a teetotaler, so I'd, I'd done both. Drank enough in my formative years by the time I stopped the average out over the rest of my life. It's kind of like dollar cost averaging. It comes out to the average number of drinks that doctors would recommend you have each week, so it's perfectly fine. And they say that alcohol destroys your brain cells. <laughs> I think that's a bunch of, um, what was I saying? Who are you people? You look like really nice people. I don't know. Whoever you are, let's all sit down to a family-style dinner. Now, if you happen to be Irish or Swedish, please, no food fights. Tonight, we have rolls and Caesar salad, sirloin sauteed shrimp, vegetarian entree, garlic and herb, mashed potatoes, and of course, the lovely Catalina blend vegetables. You notice how vegetables are always an exotic blend. They don't know what to do with them. We have peas, carrots, and string beans. They never say Newark blend. You don't hear South Bronx vegetables, no. The Atomo collection of fine leafy greens, no. It's not happening. And we're going to Catalina tonight. And for dessert, tiger striped layer cake, simply because the hostess factory is now closed. Now, while you're eating your lovely family style dinner, I'm going to improve your multitasking skills. While you're eating, you will be handed an assortment of playing cards. It's a Catalina blend. And so the idea is you hang on to the cards, or you won't get out of here tonight. You'll need those cards a little later on. I can't tell you, it's a secret activity. But I think, all right, all right, this is the first time the Fairfield Chamber has ever had strip poker at one of their functions. <laughs> It was Josie's idea, and I think it's just great. So let's give her a big hand. Now, while you're eating, and I'm not, I'd like to thank the following businesses for their extreme generosity and their response to a little gentle arm twisting. The presenting sponsor for tonight, Midwest One Bank. Citizen of the Year sponsor, Libertyville Savings Bank. the casino bar sponsors, Miller Realty, and The Hideaway. And as Josie Hannes would always say, when you start eating, there you go. She said it in a gentle, loving way, though, not the way I did it. So please, don't hesitate and, uh, and eat your salad. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and floss afterwards. Citizen of the Year sponsor, Libertyville Savings Bank. I already said that, but what the heck. Casino Bars, we heard those, Jeffrey. Hors d'oeuvre sponsor, Top of the Rock. Now we have some elite table sponsors. The Agri-Industrial Agri Plastics Company. TV&T Financial Group, PC. First National Bank in Fairfield. Cambridge. Edward Jones. Bob's Automotive. Iowa State Bank and Trust. Gamreth Doyle Insurance. Sunnybrook. I think they're here. Oh, fans of Sunnybrook. <laughs> Jackson Medical Supply. Shouse Boris Companies. And we have three table sponsors. Lisco, Sunnybrook, and Shouse Boris. Our program sponsor, hy -Vee. The decor sponsor, Pure Elegance Decorations. 
floral sponsor is Fairfield Flower Shop. The facility sponsor, Fairfield Arts and Convention Center. The MC sponsor, Headquist Productions. Those guys are just so nice. Artistic director sponsor, Josie Hannes Design. The sound sponsor, Purple Star Entertainment. And we have gifts for you tonight. It's unbelievable. Almost everybody leaves with a gift. Almost. Tonight we have gifts from Timely Solutions. Golf Links to the Past. American. The At Home Store. Ladies Workout Express. Revelations Cafe and Bookstore. The Fairfield Arts and Convention Center. Aeron Lifestyle Technology. Yummy's Gourmet Cakes. Cedar Wally, Wally Weiner. <laughs> A lot of the kids in class can read, Mr. Hitchcock. Vintage Power Wagons. Premier Pack and Ship Plus. Fairfield Nutrition. Jody's Touch Salon. Riverside Casino and Golf Resort. And the American Cancer Society. The salad must be good. It's gotten quiet. And Business Improvement Awards are sponsored by Shouse Forties. The Community Improvement Award, sponsored by Foss, Kaiken, and Cochrane, BC. The Green Business Award, sponsored by the Global ID Group. A New Young Business Award, sponsored by Sunnybrook. I think that's perfect irony. The Interactive Media Award, sponsored by Hawthorne Direct. The Progress Award, sponsored by French Renegar Associates. The Impact Award, sponsored by Fairfield Economic Development Association. The Rising Star Award, sponsored by Danaher Oil Company. And the Past Presidents Award sponsors, Fairfield Ledger, AMCD Classic 96. And the Citizen of the Year Award, sponsored by Libertyville Savings Bank. All right, enjoy your dinner. We'll resume this ridiculousness right afterwards. Okay, we're back. So did everybody get their Malloy bucks? Everybody should have gotten, and there are four of those, so they're, they're, you want to collect all four? These bucks may be collector's items someday. Action figures not included. You get a parking ticket, Malloy bucks. You need a favor from City Hall, Molloy Fox. You want to pay off the mayor in a way that's pretty unobtrusive, Molloy Fox. Incredible. By the way, these Molloy Bucks are a product of the twisted mind of Josie Hannes. She figured the government prints money. So can I. Josie will be doing 10 to 20 at Leavenworth and would appreciate to seeing you on visiting days. I know a lot of you know that I have a semi-career doing voiceovers, which is kind of like the opposite of being a mime. You may have to think about that, that's okay. I probably sold you things that you didn't want to buy with money you didn't have, but you bought anyway because my voice was so compelling. Or it was really late at night and it was just you and a bag of Cheetos and some aqua beat. And you said, you know, I don't really like that guy, I don't know what he is, but I was going to buy his stuff. Anybody in the room who has either been a teacher or is a teacher now? There you go. I was the kid you did not want in your class. Today would be called ADD, or perhaps barely controlled Tourette's syndrome. It's a sad story. Most of the stuff I found in school was pretty boring, but I thought it would be much more interesting with a soundtrack teacher would be up at the board, I'd be making mouth noises just loud enough so that the kids around me would break out laughing. I would be so cool because I wouldn't laugh. Think the teacher could figure that one out? Everybody's laughing except me. It was like a form of drink, drink, <laughs> tranquiloquism, ventriloquism. I was the dummy though. She'd say something about footsteps, you know, and be better. She'd say, what was that? Nobody's saying anything. 
She'd talk about the fog rolling in. What was that? She'd mention something about traffic and it would. <laughs> Ducar pile up on I 95, just west of exit 13. Roger, discovered by teacher. Looks like another trip to the principal's office. Roger. I spent a lot of time getting to know the principals of every school I was in. He'd call my parents in for a meeting and they'd say, you know, I think you're a really good principal. You know, my son talks about you all the time. Nothing good. Obviously, I've matured since those days. My parents used to joke that I had a face for radio. And I used to say, yeah, yeah, where did I get the jeans? Go to your room, young man. So I did, pretended I was on the radio. And I was fired for a series of subsequent jobs in the radio. Never been a good employee. And somewhere along the line, I started making commercials. And I know what you're thinking right now. Gee, what's the most interesting voiceover job you've had? Maybe that's not on your mind. At one point, I had this to read the line, there is a fire in the hotel. Please proceed to the nearest exit. And it occurred to me that my voice saying there is a fire in the hotel could be the last thing somebody hears. What an honor, what a responsibility. So I worked hard in my backstory so I could convey the message as effectively as possible. My first thought would be, there's a fire in the hotel! But they said, no, that's not what we want. They liked the emotion, but they wanted it to be calmer for some reason. Friendly, but with authority, like a regular person who was in charge, speaking to you from the ceiling in your hotel room. A regular person who wasn't about to burst into flames, like they might have been. And I thought it might work better. People would respond faster if I gave the announcements kind of a regional flavor. You know, something different for each geographic area. And although they didn't use them, I thought the ideas were very, very effective, you know, for something on the East Coast. They could do something fairly straightforward. All right, the hotel's on fire. Some bozo probably smoking in bed. Hey, hey, what are you looking at? Come on, what do you want? A freaking invitation? Come on. <laughs> and then perhaps something a little more supportive for the Midwest. Okay, by golly, looks like a fire. So, Mr. Smarty Pants, you're gonna be fricasseed like a Thanksgiving turnip if you don't skedaddle right out of here. You hear me, Mr. Crispy on the outside? But then for the hotels on the West Coast, you have a whole other approach. Okay, dude, so like I have some uncool news. Like the hotel's like on fire, okay, so, which means it's gonna get like real warm, so totally chill out, like just totally just go with the flow, cool it. Remember, man, there are no bad fires. I'm probably the only person in the world who lives in fear of waking up in a hotel and hearing my own voice. Because I've been fired from so many radio stations, but not before I gleaned some important experience, I decided that I was really an entrepreneur, which is the French word for doesn't take direction from authority figures. <laughs> tonight, tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna honor some fellow entrepreneurs, people that couldn't get jobs, people that were unable to remain a stable financial relationship for their family, so they decided to work for themselves. A noble profession, very few of whom, I believe, have been fired from their first, second, third, and fourth radio job. And to handle the task of presenting these prestigious awards, it is my pleasure to introduce the president the president of the Fairfield Area Chamber of Commerce for 2013. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sean Lisk, second vice president, commercial and ag banker, Midwest One. Thanks, everybody. Um, I, uh, I'd like to welcome up Michael Haley, Halley to uh, help me present some of these awards. We have a uh, very interesting evening. Sure. 
now going to present the Business Improvement Awards for 2012. These are all sponsored by our friends at Schaus Voorhees Companies. First recipient, Fairfield Nutrition, remodeled the uh, property at 50 South Main Street, east side of the square, formerly Jacob Ladder Antique Mall. They doubled their space, added a larger smoothie counter bar, more tables and chairs, painted by recovered colors, and added a larger classroom. Accepting on the behalf is a club member, Jody Kerr. Yeah. Hurry up, Gus. All right, Gus is gonna hand out the awards. Now hand it back to her. The next one is for Flirt, and accepting the award is Julie Greason, owner, and Sarah Greason, manager. Uh, the location of the store is the former Gimbel's jewelry store. The interior probably hadn't been remodeled for 20 years. Um, they painted the walls in a flirty pink, put in a new floor, installed fitting rooms, and a space for spray tanning. They removed the small viewing room in the front, painted the front of the building, and put up a beautiful new sign that says Flirt. It's a very nice place. Presenting the awards guest shops. The next business improvement award is for Hollander Insurance. Um, accepting the award is Chris Gentry, owner. Hollander Insurance moved to 108 West Burlington Avenue, which was remodeled to include new office space, a conference room, and security system. The new location provides increased workspace, a larger waiting area, and increased privacy to meet the needs of customers. At the same time, they also adopted a new logo and window signage for the new location. Presenting the award is Gus Schaus. I'm always in, in the lookout for the next great workout, but this next award recipient denied my request to join. Ladies Workout Express. Uh, I said I didn't have what it takes. Um, <laughs> they, they added a wall with the window, they weatherized the floors, they remodeled the bathroom, added a shower, painted these, next slide, painted these great colors, added a recycled rubber flooring to the circuit area. They replaced all the doors and hardware, added a new hot water heater, and installed plumbing for washer and dryer. Accepting the award is owner and instructor, Deborah Sidoris. <laughs> Go sit down. Go over there. All right. A little role reversal now. Next recipient is Midwest One Bank. They remodeled their main floor in a downtown location. Their focus was on updating look and style, making it safer for staff and customers, providing better traffic flow for entrance. Can you go back to the first picture? See how gloomy it was back then? It was, I used to go in there and I just feel depressed. And then go to the next one. Look at that corner office. It's like the office of shame. So they wanted to bring the, uh, the teller counter forward, and, and now this is this nice sitting area. You can sit there and read a magazine. And uh, accepting this award is President Ron Haynes and this guy, Sean Lisk. All right, our next recipient is Miller Realty. Now, they had a problem. Can you go to that slide? They had an infestation of these little creatures. And from what I understand, these mats and colorful colors attract these, these nuisances. So if you go to the next slide, they put in these neutral tones that apparently are not attractive and these pictures on the wall that scare them off. So uh, they installed the carpet and they built walls and a new countertop and then they added a break room and a kid's room so they could contain them. Uh, and then they removed the carpet in the bathroom and Put in waterproof flooring just in case. <laughs> Accepting this award is uh, Jen Stever and Sarah Kelly. All right, our last 
recipient is going to single-handedly take care of our deer overpopulation problem in the city. It's White Tail County estate, Country Estates. They uh, renovated a 5,000 square foot White Tail Lodge. They put in a comfortable lodging to sleep 27 with the wraparound deck and the lower level has open patios. Now the newly redecorated bridal college accommodates 12 and has a full salon with six chairs for bridal parties to prepare for the big event. So nothing says I love you like taking out a buck after the ceremony. <laughs> Accepting this as uh, event coordinator, Aaron Jones. So this is the point that if you have a chair and it happens to be facing the other way, to turn it this way, because you don't want to miss the strip poker. No, it's not working. Right I'd like to introduce a man who is a produced screenwriter. There's a new film coming out this year. He's opened for the Supremes. He's toured all over the world with Cirque du Soleil. He's performed at numerous comedy clubs across the U.S. He's globally renowned and locally residential. The one, the only, Lee Ross. seeing the evening. Come on, give it up, Jeffrey. Constable, I wish I had his voice. In general. For some Malloy bucks. I know, these bucks that they're giving out here, I was like, you know, the Fed's going to be printing these in another week. But, uh, anyway, it's nice to be here tonight. How many of you enjoy a bit of juggling? Forget that. Yeah, save that for another time. Like five people were like, oh, juggling. Yeah. So, um, I don't know what, he, what you guys caught from that intro there, but yes, I, uh, I used to work with Cirque du Soleil. How many of you have been to a Cirque du Soleil show in Vegas or somewhere? By applause, anybody? For those of you who don't know what Cirque du Soleil, Soleil means, it just means do it my way. Um, actually, everything in French kind of sounds sexy sometimes. You could say anything in French. You could say something like, Mon chien est mort en la voiture. That means my dog is dead in the car. But it sounds insanely sexy. I could see this crowd needs something visual, something to help us on uh, uh, getting, getting pumped up for the, all the awards. Congratulations to those uh, businesses, and, and thanks again to the chamber for having me. Hold on, here we go. Pretty big. 
big. Thank you. Thank you. Did you get hit with some spritz just at the end there? Really strong. Um, so yeah, so uh, it's, it's funny to be in Fairfield. I am a produced screenwriter. I, I, I do write film when uh, not performing. And um, it's interesting. Hollywood's a strange place. I, I, I actually, uh, I'm so enjoying being here in Fairfield where um, there aren't those games. And uh, I've been working right now on a new reboot for Schwarzenegger and Stallone to do together. It's called the Inarticulators. It's where they go in search of vowels and consonants and try and form a sentence together. Give me the I, the O, and the U. Can you imagine if you should, yeah, I know. <laughs> Stallone doing Shakespeare. To be or not to be. What was the question? I know, that's an old one, I'm sorry. I, it's an old one. So, uh, so what else? You know, uh, I, I, yeah, I used to tour with Cirque. You can't use mime in your everyday life all that much. Those of you who know about mime, I'm gonna do a little, little, little something here. Um, I don't know if you can see this in the back, but I like doing this. <laughs> Five people are like, I like doing this in the airport <laughs> next to that conveyor belt. Hi! Got my own. See you later. Um, you can't use mime in your, your everyday life that much. Um, I can hang myself for you here. trick here. This will be, I, I have no idea where this has been. Here we go. This is improv, folks. Hold on. Wait, wait, one more, one more try. This is a tough one. Five guys are like, hey. One more. One more. Ah. There we go. There you go. Ah. Close enough. Close enough. So, uh, I noticed there are different styles of, different styles of juggling in different parts of Iowa. So, uh, let me just get that, there we go. Different parts of Iowa, there are different styles of juggling. I, uh, I noticed, <laughs> throw me a fish. Uh, okay. For my first trick, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Couple of doubles. I noticed that in Otomwa, juggling is very intense. These nine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're like. to the, you know, me juggling is not very impressive, but 
Um, hi, uh, are, are, in the white? Hi. This is that moment where someone in the audience is like, oh shit. Oh shit. Have I got my Spanx on? Oh my god, it's Vegas night. What's your name? I love it, she's looking behind her. She's like, yes, I am talking to you. Um, what, what's your name, Annie? Amy, Amy, are you well known in Fairfield? Man, Hy-Vee is just like, that's scary. I was like walking through Hy-Vee, I was like, do I know anyone here? Uh, Amy, can you come on, come on up here for a second? Everybody give Amy a big round. Like, like I have this backwards. <laughs> Hold on, let's go. Yeah, let me adjust the mic for myself. Hi, hi on the right. Big thumbs up over there. Big thumbs up. Big, uh, big thumbs, thumbs up on that side. And on that side, yeah. Hey, a okay, a o a okay, yeah. That's good, I feel good. I feel good, my hair feels good. Just had my hair done, that's great. So the other day I got in my car and I started driving. I was driving down Pleasant Plain. I was, I, I think I, yeah, I was driving. I was taking that sharp turn, so, oh, to the left and to the right, oh my God. And there was someone right behind me, I adjusted my rear view mirror and rolled down the window on the passengers on the, that side. I didn't have a button. It was a really old freaking car. And as that, that car passed me going up to the lake, because I was going fishing, as they passed me, I rolled that window down a little further and as they went by, I gave them the, I, yeah, uh, that's right, because that's how I rolled. I got to the lake, I got to up to Walton, Walton Lake place, wherever the free, uh, I parked the car, yeah, put it in that skin, open the door, on the, yes, the, she gets driven around everywhere, doesn't she? And I got out of the car and I picked up my fishing gear and I walked up to the lake. La, 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 la. Got to the lake. No one was around, and I picked up the fishing rod, and two of them, <laughs> just one, to, and uh, I, I cast her out. I cast that. <laughs> I was waiting for that fish. I reeled in a little, just trying to catch a nibble. No one was around. Had a quick swig of my beer, <laughs> and suddenly, while I was waiting, <coughs> She is just dying behind me here. <laughs> you know, I was all alone, and as I was, I just, yeah. I noticed I really <laughs> had to go to the bathroom really badly. 
no one was around, so I put down the fishing rod. I put down the fishing rod and the beer. The mug of beer. Whatever I would... Oh. Boy. And I decided I'd go about my business. So... It was a hands-free number. So high-fiving. And then finally... That was right through my pants. I didn't unzip. Finally, I was all done. Once again, I made the international symbol. You know, it takes a lot of courage to improvise. Put your hands together again for Amy. looking at me like, oh yeah, you're gonna get it now. So, uh, I wanna say thanks again. Um, I'm gonna leave you with one last little bit here. This farmer, this farmer has three daughters and he's finally decided to let the daughters start dating. So the first guy shows up for the eldest daughter, he says, Ha, ah, my name's Stu, I've come for Sue, I don't have the flu. <laughs> farmer looks him over. Calls down soon. Second guy shows up for the middle daughter. He says, hey, my name's Freddie. I've come for Betty. Is she ready? <laughs> Farmer looks him over. Calls down Betty. Third guy shows up for the youngest daughter. He says, my name's Chuck. And the farmer shot him. <laughs> I want to say thanks again to the chamber and everyone. Have a great night. A warm night, chamber. Thank you, Jeffrey. Lee Ross. There's only one. And we've got a big hand for Lee Ross. All right. All right, it's time to honor our past presidents. Sponsors for honoring the past presidents, Fairfield Ledger and KMCD Classic 96. And here to honor last year's presidents is our brand new, newly minted president, Sean Lisk. Amy, I had nothing to do with that, I swear. All right, uh, here to honor the past presidents, um, this year, we were lucky enough to have two presidents, so we're going to honor two presidents this year. Um, the first one, if you'd come forward, is Jenny Hughes. Jenny is the marketing director of Jefferson County Health Center. She served as president for the first half of the year, and then needed to step down for professional and personal reasons. Congratulations, Jenny. And the next is uh, Terry Baker, who's the owner of Send Out Cards and is the assistant director of the Fairfield Arts and Convi or Fairfield, Iowa Convention of Visitors Bureau. Terry was president-elect and stepped up in a very critical time for the chamber and did a superb job navigating through the rest of the year. Thanks, Terry. for serving as president. Next, I am going to uh, give away the Distinguished Service Award. Um, that is for Fred McElwee. Fred is Director of Auxiliary Services of the Fairfield School District. He completed his two terms, totaling six years of service in the Fairfield Chamber. He served as president and treasurer and helped on numerous committees. We thank Fred for his service to the chamber, and unfortunately, Ed, our Fred was unable to attend tonight.
All right, we're doing very well. Oh, we, uh, Terry, we do have one additional thing for you. This is important, this is, and this is gonna be probably a, a tradition. It's a bottle of Bayer aspirin. I think it'd be perfect, and it can be used for each past president for as long as you want, and then pass on to the new president. So we'll make that available to you. All right. Now, let's see, we've got this next, and then that next. All right. Thank you, Sean. Part of our exercise program with the new president. We have reached the first audience participation exercise for the evening. This is a total experiment. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to play some music. While the music is playing, we will touch out, toss out beach balls. When the beach ball gets to you, just pass it on to somebody else. No, don't hit it and pass it on. These are fairly gentle, so no one should be injured. If anyone is injured, again, your Malloy Bucks will take care of any, any injuries that, that are necessary. So, here we go. And we've got volunteers. We're passing them out. All right. Wait. And oh, stand up while this is going on. When the music stops. Okay, Nick. Okay, who's got a ball? Okay, when the music stops, hang on to the ball because you win a prize. I know it's exciting, yeah. First one, we have four $25 Chamber Buck certificates being passed out at this very moment. And no doubt some of you are passing out at this moment. All right. Who didn't get one? Over there. I'm sorry, you're too far to that side. You don't know. All right. Here we go. When Elvis starts, the balls go again. Let's keep them moving. That's good. Okay. When the balls stop. When the balls. No, no, there we go. All right, whoever has a ball wins. What do they win, you might say? Four Cedar Valley Winery gift bags and t-shirts. There you go. All right. The late, great Elvis Presley will start again, and when he stops, hang on to that beach ball. Go. All right, let's get it back to the back, back row there. All right. You have a ball? All right. What have I won, you might say? Why, it's the same thing that the other group won. Four more Cedar Valley Winery gift bags and t shirts. King of Rock and Roll will be once again singing, and when he stops, hold on to the ball. Ready? Go. Toss. Okay, when the ball stops, hang on to it. You have now won a vintage power wagon hat. There you go. All right, that was our first experiment. Thank you for participating. There'll be more exercises coming up, so you'll be able to work off the garlic mashed potatoes in no time at all. We have come to that part of the ceremony known as the Chamber Board Recognition. And this is Sean's first test as Chamber President to actually recognize the members of the board. We thought about blindfolding them and we said, nah, we'll just let him give him a, give him a chance. The chances of getting a loan from his bank will disappear. So we're gonna let him do it with his eyes open. Recognize him. 
Uh, first, I'd like to recognize the Chamber officers. Uh, Terry Baker, if you'd please stand up and stay standing. Sue Gale, Michael Hale Halley, Josie Hannes, Seth Miller, Lori Vaughn, Laura Atwood, Don Bechtel, John Olson, Ken Ross, Gus Schaus, Darian Sloat, and Rhonda Whitney. These are your, your Chamber Board of Directors for uh, the 2013 year. Thanks. There we go. Well, the excitement continues, at least up here. <laughs> All right. So, never let it be said that we're a staid and sober group. We have assembled a group of some of the finest rock and roll, air guitar, air bass, air drum, and air vocalists that you will ever see. And no rockster is complete without having their own stylist, so we have brought Josie Hannes here, who will dress up the following rock and rollers. Scott Vaughn. Summer List. June Lowenberg. And of course, Ed Malloy. Welcome to Bankers Wives of Fairfield, get crazy. <laughs> all right. So first of all, it's important that Josie finds the right clothing for the right personality. Okay. What do you mean that looks good? That's looking good, yeah. Uh, the year was 1972. the time to order an extra coffee, I think, and just, just kind of, and it should be Irish coffee, by the way. Summer is sporting the burka look. Ed is sporting the look he had in college. and we've got something on the plan for you. There you go, Ed. There we go. Yes. Mullet man. Oh, it's all good. Scott Vaughn here. These are tough shoes to fill, Scott. Or something like that. I'm too sexy for your party. Too sexy for your party. The way I'm just going to say. It's not going to be an easy week at the bar. You'll notice 
a certain FBAP programs are restricted, this may be one of them. Alright, we haven't figured out the logistics of everything, but you know, our heart's in the right place. Close enough, alright.